welcome to Music Student 101. Lend us your ears, and we'll add another chord to our discussion on harmonic progression. Ladies and gents, we give you the seven chord. And now your hosts, Jeremy Burns and Matthew Scott Phillips. So how's it going today, Jeremy? It's going good, man. It's going good. I just played a show last night <laughs> with my Irish band, Jasper Cole, at the new pub, Brennan's, that opened uh, downtown here. Very nice. Very nice. And it was, a great, it was a great thing, although it was a late thing. It was a late thing, so... So uh, I, I had wondered how I'm going to do today in uh, harmonic dictation <laughs> or harmonic progression. Or harmonic progression, right, because we're talking as much about, like, fun chord progressions at this point. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think that we, and you're probably going to notice that we're going to go back, I'm going to go back and change the names to the previous <laughs> Harmonic Dictations episodes. Okay. If I can, we'll see. Yeah. Um, because I just think it also makes, it's a little bit more approachable. It's a more, more recognizable to the person who's just searching for podcasts and wants to know sure. about por- chord progressions. So having said that, welcome to Harmonic Progression. Harmonic Progression. Part three. Part three. Now, before we get too much into it, I do have a little li- listener mail. Oh, good. To, to uh, share with you guys. This is from Richard McLean, who is kind enough to give us a donation and also write us a nice little note here. Uh, Richard says, enjoying your podcast tremendously. I'm nearing retirement from engineering and my free time is going more and more to musical pursuits. Hope you keep this up, he says. <laughs> Richard McLean. Well, we certainly intend to. And thank you. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Now, whenever I hear the name McLean, you know what I think about? Uh, like the, the Highlander guy? No, <laughs> I think about Bruce Willis in an air conditioning vent with a oh, cigarette lighter. Oh, right, yeah, right, that McLean. That McLean. Everyone, there's, there's an ongoing dispute about whether or not Die Hard is a Christmas movie. <laughs> what school of thought are you in about that? Uh, I think, I think it is a... Oh man, see, I'm I'm afraid of, of alienating listeners now. People are gonna be like, "You're so wrong about that." But There's only one or two ways to it's, be. It's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. I consider it a music, a, a music. I consider it a movie that takes place at Christmas, mm-hmm. which doesn't necessarily make it a Christmas movie because the movie is not about Christmas. Right. Yeah, it just has to sort of take it. It just sort of takes place there at, at that time. And that's the same thing with Gremlins. Right, yeah. However, I think of Gremlins as a Christmas movie, and I think about Die Hard as a Christmas movie, even though what you said was probably the more accurate yeah. assessment. But, you know, e- e- I'm, even now I'm sitting here thinking, well, okay, well, you know, what is a movie that's about Christmas, you know? I mean... You know, yeah, that doesn't happen very much. There's always something else going well, on. Well, I mean, you know, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, I suppose, yeah. is a Christmas movie because it's it's about Christmas, you know? Prancer kind of revolved around Santa Claus and the reindeers. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tim Allen's The Santa Claus or something, <laughs> you know. These things are about Christmas and are there for Christmas movies. Uh, uh, a Christmas Story. Yeah. Right, you know. This is about Christmas and what he's going to get. for Even though there was other stuff going on in the movie, I see. Yeah. All right. Uh, Childhood bullying. Yeah, but, you know, Gremlins and, and Die Hard and Home Alone, you know, these these are just... Home Alone is kind of a gray area, I guess, but, mm-hmm. <laughs> but but these are movies that are that aren't a, the story is not about Christmas. They just happen to take place. Right. That is just my opinion, and obviously I'm not set in stone about it because I'm arguing with myself. Oh but. yeah, <laughs> we're not the. <laughs> this is not a movie uh, podcast. How did we get off on this? <laughs> oh, I don't know. We okay. don't, we just digressed as we normally do. <laughs> okay, let us continue with the podcast, shall we? All right, let's let's. Speaking of music, for once. <laughs> so. On our harmonic progression episode part one, yes, we covered the one chord, one, the two chord, two, the four, and the five. Now we got a we we got a lot of a lot of mileage out of that one. That was a big, pretty big, <laughs> a lot of stuff on that one. Yeah. Um, and then the next episode, we actually covered the one, the two six, um, the two seven chord. One, the two seven, four also, and yeah, the five seven chord. Four and five seven with all their appropriate inversions. Yes, the inversions. Yeah. So. What, what does that leave for today? So that leaves three, which we'll talk about. Mm-hmm. Uh, that leaves six, which we'll talk about in a minute. And it leaves seven, which is actually a very important chord because there's kind of a lot of things you have to know about the seven chord. They're not hard, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know, there's, there's some variations and variables and, and questions to ask, you know. 
about the seven chord. So uh, the seven chord uh, uh, is a chord of dominant function. Mm. You know, uh, check the Circle of Fifths episode where we talk about function a great little episode. bit. Great episode. Yeah, <laughs> great episode. Yeah, we should probably talk about function more. Ah. But but yeah, uh, the the seven chord is is a chord of dominant function, which means that it leads to one. Uh-huh. It leads that half step up to one. Matter of fact, in in counterpoint days, remember those? Yeah, mm. uh, it was it was because <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy. A lot did of not, days. Those were a lot of days. Jeremy did not like the counterpoint. I gave him homework. <laughs> I know is, is, is what is what the problem was, and you know. I thought I paid my dues. <laughs> Uh, which he turned in late. But anyway, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> a few episodes late, right? Uh, so in, in the counterpoint days, you know, and even today, you know, it is it is not considered kosher to resolve the seven downwards, except in some a couple of special circumstances. In general, you have to resolve scale degree seven up to scale degree one. And that, that rule sort of, sort of in... Let's not say the word rule. And that convention sort of uh, necessitates that the seven chord is going to resolve to tonic. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it's a dominant functioning chord. There's, uh, there's more reasons that it's a dominant functioning chord. By dominant functioning chord, I mean that it is basically a substitute for a five. So if we, you know, if we assume that we're in good old C major, right? And of course this works in any major key. Uh, but for the sake of simplicity, good old C major. And I'm going to do a, a, a chord progression that goes from 1 to 2-6 uh, to, two, I don't know, what should I do? 5-7 maybe? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. And then uh, back to 1. We've yeah. heard that before. Yeah, we. That that's, that's pretty basic, right? We... Can for that five seven chord substitute a seven chord, a chord based on scale degree seven. I can go from one, and I can go to two six, and I can also go to seven. Yeah. Mm. So uh, actually, technically, that was a seven and second inversion. Mm. Kind of, kind of messed up, but <laughs> but but you get the idea. So I can. Um, I can use seven chords anywhere I can use use a five chord. In fact, in C major, you know, if you look at if you look at the seven chord, you notice that the, the notes are the notes in a in just a good old seven triad triad are uh, B D and F, right? Just yeah. Diminished seven triad. Um, that is basically just a 5-7 without a G, the G, right? If I were to add a G to that, then we've got G, B, D, F. That is a 5-7 chord. 7, uh, seven chord is, is just a 5-7 without the 5, which is why it works so well as dominant, as dominant harmonies, right? Right. So my challenge is going to be to be determining whether I'm hearing a 7 chord. Yes. A 5-7 chord, a dominant chord, or a diminished chord, right? Or a diminished chord, yeah. yeah. And you wouldn't think that'd be very difficult. But I feel like it is going to be just because of that dominant functions happening. That's yeah, what listening, I'm going to have to do with that one moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, it can it can definitely be challenging, especially when you know these these two work so seamlessly seamlessly together. Sometimes you know because I mean I can go I can go from like one six to uh, seven six four, yeah, you know, and then to uh, five seven so easily. Mm. Right, yeah. Seven, six, four being seven in first inversion, right? Second inversion. Second inversion, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. With the fifth F in the bass. Okay. You know? So so yeah, it, it 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 can it can be tough. And you're absolutely right. Um you have to listen to for whether there is this perfect fifth in the chord. Mm. You know? Um yeah. which is going to give it a sort of I like to think of it as a sweetness. A sweetness. Yeah. You know, as, as opposed to, you know, which is just kind of crunchy, right? Kind of a sourness. Yeah, <laughs> you know, tritone, uh-huh. right? Which is, really, which is really prominent in that seven chord. Mm. Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah, yeah. So that is a good old seven triad. Of course, there are uh, sevens involved in the seven chord. You know? So you have you have the triad. You have what we call a seven half diminished seven. Okay. Meaning that the seventh of this triad is a half step below the root. So uh, in the case of my B uh, B diminished triad, I'm adding an I'm adding an A. Okay. An A natural. And then we have the fully diminished triad in which the seventh we're added is actually um, a minor third below uh, below the root. So is that right? Am I doing that right? Yeah, I'm doing that right. Yeah, I'm doing that right. <laughs> yeah. So, and then we have a fully diminished uh, triad in which the seventh is actually a minor third below the root. So instead of A natural, I'm hitting A flat here. Mm. Yeah. That sounds totally tense. Yeah, nice chord, huh? Yeah. Very, very crunchy. You know, one of the, one of the crunchiest chords we have. Yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, and, you know, uh, in major, a half diminished seven chord is, is diatonic. Oh. You know, you'll, so, so you'll hear those a lot. Uh, we'll talk about borrowed chords at some point. You can actually make a, a fully diminished seven chord a major just because you want to. Uh-huh. You know, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's the seven chord in a nutshell. Okay. You know, now, of course, um, in, in minor mode, you have some decisions to make because mm. in diatonic natural minor... As we know, this this seven chord is actually uh, is actually a, a whole step below the tonic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is a major chord. Right. right? Yeah. Um, we've talked before about how in minor mode the seventh is all, often raised to make a major uh, a major dominant chord, right? So. The, it is also raised in order to make a uh, a convincing a convincing uh, seven chord, so like a sharp seven chord. Hmm. Right. And was that that middle chord? Was that a um, was like a, di a diminished chord, or was it? That was a diminished chord. Yeah. Okay. That was that was my raising the seventh scale degree from B flat to B natural in order to have a, a leading tone that is a half step away from the tonic and resolve up, just like it would in a major key. And we're still in C, right? We're still in C. So this would have been like a, a, a B, a basically a B diminished chord, right? Yes. Uh, but in a minor key. Yeah. So, you know, so you'll see both kinds of seven chords in minors. You know, you'll, you'll see the, the, the diatonic um, that's uh, a, a whole step away. And you'll also hear the 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 um, the modified with the raised uh, seven to make that a diminished chord. You you probably heard that the diatonic version is a major chord, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you'll also hear the, you'll also hear the other version in which the the seventh is raised to make that diminished chord that pulls us towards the tonic. So. Dictating seven chords. Mm. Uh, as, with, as with all hearing seven chords, it's a question of... It's a question of figuring out what works for you. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can... Um, for me, you know, I like to listen to the amount of dissonance in the chord, mm -hmm. right? Because a uh, seven chord is going to sound more dissonant, especially if it's a seven seven chord, and they usually are. Uh, -huh. uh it, it's it's going to sound much more dissonant to me because of the absence of the perfect fifth that is in the five seven mm -hmm. right so if i play if i play a progression with a five seven chord in it that five seven chord there had a little bit of crunchiness because it had a seven, but still kind of sweet, a little bland mm -hmm. compared to if I played uh, a seven chord. Um, 
So it's a one four seven one. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Uh, it's crunchier, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So it almost sounds like uh, I'm inclined to say it's a more complete resolution because of all the leading tone, leading tone action. It's a more emotional resolution. Oh, right? okay. you, you hear all of this dissonance that just kind of empties away. Okay. You know, as opposed to a little bit of dissonance that kind of empties away. How does that right. compare to the feeling that you get from a five seven to one resolution? Uh, like I said, a little bit of emptiness. So this is five, seven to one. A little bit of emptiness that, that, that you know, it's like a Disney movie. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> All right. <laughs> Explain to our listener, please. It's kind of happy ish. Okay. No, no. Unless you do that, I suppose. Ah. So anyway, that, that, is, that is the seven chord. Okay. Do you want to do some try to, try to guesses, some progressions? and? I think that would be. Yeah, that would All be right. the way to go. So I'm going. I'm going to do a, a chord progression. Okay. That I'm making up. And on my first listen, I'll be listening for the bass, right? Listen for the bass. Okay. Absolutely. So. Okay. I heard a. Absolutely. So okay, I've got that bass line down now, and I, I'm gathering there's going to be some kind of dominant function occurring uh, towards the end of that. Um, okay, next listen. Next listen. What are we getting? What are we going to be listening for now? Um, the soprano. The tr yeah. The melody. Sure. Good idea. Okay. Is the, the note itself? Was it like? No, it wasn't. You're kind of hearing the bass line still. Am I hearing the bass line still? Yeah. Crap. So, started on what note is that? Uh, this note, but I don't know what it is. Uh, five, four, three, two, one. Five. So, yeah. Okay, so that's there a G. you go. Hey. hey. <laughs> All right, so that's a G. Yep. It's five. And we went. All right, and two. There's only one way for that note to go. I called it, yes. Okay. So. Okay, so we got a five going to four, mm -hmm. and then four again, and then down to three. Yeah, so we've got. For our bass and soprano. Not hard, right? No. Yeah. Uh, this is the fun part. Okay. Third right. listen. So, chords. Well, seventh listen, but <laughs> for our purposes, it'll be third listen. <laughs> Alright. Okay, now listening to the quality of those chords, I'm starting to realize that the second chord in the progression is actually a 2-6 chord. Indeed. Very good. Because of that minor feel. The first chord is one, right? That's, yeah. that's, that's pretty easy. We should just go ahead and say <laughs> that, huh? And yeah, and then that second chord, what makes it feel like a 2-6? It's that minorness. That minorness. Because if I'm hearing that bass line, I'm thinking it's probably a 1-4-5-1 one, one progression. Yeah, yeah. Until if I had, if I had played 4 there, um... Different, right? That's Big a major. Difference. Yes, I didn't do that. I did, and that just leaves this uh, this uh, ever tricky third chord. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm hearing a a, a five in the bass. Am I? Oh, I am. So I really, I, what I really need to do at this point is determine if this chord is a five seven or a seven chord. Yes. I feel there's a, a sweetness going on. Yeah. 
So, so I'm gonna your say final answer? I'm going to say that's a 5-7 chord. That is a 5-7. Ha-ha. Yeah. First try. Yeah, first, yeah, very impressive, yeah. Um, you can listen for that sweetness. It, it can also help to engage your theory brain. If, you're, if you feel good that that bass note is scale degree five, what one note is missing from a seven chord? Oh, you got, you got the <laughs> seven, you got the two, you got the four. You got the six. There is no, yeah, there is no five and a seven chord. Aha. Uh -huh. So if there's a five in your bass line. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> then I got that wrong earlier because I thought that the, the G was in both chords. And then going back and looking at it, that yeah. G does not exist. The G does not exist in a seven chord. Silly me. You put a G in a seven chord and you have a five chord. Right, right. Uh, or, you know, in whatever key. You know, we, we hang out in C major all the time. We should probably stop doing that. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. So one... Two, six, five, seven, and then we ended on one again. That right. Was, right. So that was pretty easy. Right? Cool. Yeah. Uh, let's do a different one. Try again. All right. That sounded very nice. Yeah, there was well, quite a few chords there, wasn't there? There were quite a few chords there. <laughs> okay, so what I heard in the bass line sounded kind of like a walk up the major scale. Indeed. Okay, so now, okay, one, two, three, four, five, one. Yeah. Okay. That was easy. Yeah. So let's listen to the soprano this time. Hmm. The soprano kind of evaded me that time around. Soprano can be tricky. Yeah. Um, Is that because you... I'm a bass player? Yeah, that's probably got a lot to Maybe. do with it. But if... It helps me to if you're going when you go to listen to the soprano line. Mm -hmm. First thing you do is have to sing the highest note you hear. There you go. Yeah. Okay. See, I I I guess the note lower than that. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you're singing the highest. Yeah. Yeah, it can help you to arpeggiate this chord in your head, right? So you at least got a place to start with, and you at least sort of tuned into that note, uh -huh. right? And then it went, uh... My bad piano playing doesn't help. That's all right. So we've got a little walking down going on, right? Uh-huh. Contrary motion to the bass line. Yeah. As we learned about in our counterpoint episodes. <laughs> Indeed. trick is going to be, first of all, to figure out what this, this note is right here. Sing down the scale. No, no, no. That feels like, that feels like a 3, 2, 1, right? Did it? <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, I could keep on going. Yeah. So that was a five. That's, that's five. Okay. Sing so, down, the old sing down trick. So, yep. Keep singing until it no longer feels comfortable. Okay. Yeah, if you sing down, if you feel like you can go lower, you probably should. If you feel like you can't, like... You know, there was a note there that sounded like tonic, right? Yes, yeah. very much. Five. Four. Three. Two. Two. Three. There you go. Okay. 
starting mm. to take shape here. Yeah, so now we've, we've got our bass and soprano line. I should have been notating this. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> Me <maybe>. too. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's. Uh, Second right. listen. I think I got an idea of what's going on now. Yeah. So let's give it a third listen. Gonna use my theory brain now. So, chord quality. Yeah. Major. Minor. Oh, that's diminished. Mm -hmm. Major. Sounds minor. It does. Okay. That sounded like a major to major, like five to one mm, kind of thing. Indeed. Okay, so let's think about this. The first note, we know we're in the key of C, and let's face it, there's not a lot of these harmonic dictation moments where we actually start on a chord that isn't the one. Not a lot. It could happen. It can happen. Okay. But, you know. but I don't think it happened that time, did it? I don't think it did either. So there's your one chord. Now we determined this was a diminished chord. Mm -hmm. And since we're in a major key, mm -hmm. I can use my theory brain mm -hmm. and arrive at that uh, if this was, yeah, the only, the only diminished chord you'll really come across in the major key is that uh, seven chord. Yeah. In Sour. what inversion? Oh, now you got me. Okay, <laughs> going back to the bass line. Mm -hmm. We knew that we walked up from the one. Right. So this chord, the second chord in the progression we're talking about, starts with the bass line on two. Mm -hmm. So now all I gotta do is say uh, where that goes from seven. So in the seven chord, you got a seven and then a two. Uh huh. So that is the first inversion of the seven chord. Very nice. Or the seven six chord. Very nice. Okay. Okay. So that's a three in the bass line, mm -hmm. and since it sounds major, mm -hmm. I'm gonna think this is probably, I'm gonna deduct mm -hmm. that this is probably the first chord in first inversion. The one Very chord nice. in first inversion. Yeah, one, seven, six, one, six. Okay, yeah. yeah. And that's that minor chord we were talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna think to myself, I'm gonna think two for a second here. Okay. Because we've got a we've got a scale degree four in the bass. Uh huh. We've got a scale degree two in the soprano. Uh huh. Those so are both parts of the two chord. Two is minor in a major key. It is minor. It sounds minor. Want to go with two? Let's go with two in first inversion. Two six. Nice. Two six. And where does two six always or almost always go? That five. Yeah. Back to one. Yeah, I, I love the way two. The two chord kind of becomes five. Yeah. The way it just kind of changing that one little note really makes it lighten up, you know? Can we hear that whole thing one more time? Absolutely. So we got a one, seven in first inversion, one in first inversion, mm -hmm. two in first inversion, five. Was that a 5-7 chord or just a 5 chord? It's just a 5 chord. Okay, okay. Yeah, I didn't think I caught any 7 yeah. in this. Yeah, in yeah. just a 5 chord. Great. All right. Yeah. So there's two examples of progressions in the major key that include the 7 chord. All right. So how about the minor key? Oh, I love Ooh. the minor key. But I think I'm going to run into a little bit more of a challenge here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Because now we have two, two diminished chords to consider. Yeah. Because it can be the two diminished. In minor, we got two diminished, and mm -hmm. we have a seven diminished. And we got two diminished, and we have seven diminished. Yeah, so we're going to have to engage our theory brains mm -hmm. just a little bit here and ask ourselves, what is the function of those chords? Wait a minute. I screwed that up, didn't I? Because the seven isn't a diminished in minor. It so can be. It if can be. If it's raised, be. yeah. If, if the seven scale degree is raised, it becomes diminished, absolutely. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, okay, cool. Yeah. Not cool, but cool. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to have to think about function a little bit. Is this chord going to a 5 or a 7? Is this chord going to a dominant? Mm -hmm. In which case, maybe it's a diminished 2. Or is this chord going back to 1? In which case, it's probably a 7. 
Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's see if I can make up an interesting chord progression here. Let me get my notebook. I'm going to write this down. <laughs> my memory cannot handle five chord progression, apparently. Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. I have a little confession, Matt. I have a little confession to you and all of the people in the music okay. world. Because what should every musician always have? Uh, staff paper? Staff paper. <laughs> so I found my little staff notebook, and I'm looking at uh, some of the last stuff I did on this thing. Oh, wow. This is the 2001. Oh, nice. The last time I bought staff paper was 2001. That's not cool <laughs> at all. <laughs> We all have software now. Is is you know? It's... Yes, yes. Okay, okay. I, I got my pen. I got my pencil, not pen, because there's gonna be some erasing. Yes, there is. All right, bass line. Okay. All right. Here we go. Okay, <clears throat> I'm thinking that I'm hearing a one, two, three, four, five, five, one. Very good. Cool. Great. Yeah. Baseline. Check. Yeah, I'm. I'm apparently uh, uh, in the mood for these walking up baselines today. Love them. Okay. Uh, so. Next listen. Listen for that soprano. And we should probably figure out what note the soprano is singing. Should we just do that now? Yes. Okay. So, let's play that chord one more time. It'd be almost too hard for me to sing. <clears throat> What's the octave of that? Uh, uh, is this it? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, scale degree? Okay. I think it's one. Kind of hard to sing down, isn't it? I couldn't sing down from that. We're already well. down. It's one. Yeah, great. <laughs> great. So, soprano. I can't say that I got the entire thing. Okay. But I think I got to start. <laughs> okay. Like the first chord, we, we already discussed that the soprano started on the one, right? So what I thought I heard was one, seven. Uh, raise seven or natural seven? N raise seven. All right. And then back to one. Right? Yeah. Okay, now here's where I get lost. Maybe, I think I may know why you have gotten lost. Okay. I'll just play the right hand here, okay? Okay. So was it one, sharp seven, one, one? One. And one again? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then sharp seven. Yep. And then back to one. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's a real tricky thing to have happen. And a lot, a lot of people get confused when they're expecting the soprano to move. Uh-huh. And it doesn't. Uh-huh. Right? So, so when we went... Uh, yeah, it's moving back and forth, so that that's nice and easy. Uh -huh. uh, so, stays on that same note, you know. Uh, don't ever discount that as a possibility. Mm. Especially if it sounds like maybe you just lost it. Like, well, where did it go? Yeah. It flew off into the ether. Yeah. Sometimes when it, when it feels like it flew off into the ether, what it really did was not go anywhere. Mm. And, that, and that's a very common thing for people to struggle with. Uh, and then, you know, uh, again, we <laughs> it continues to not go anywhere, right? Yeah. So, um, finally. It's not the world's most uh, interesting soprano line, but, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> it's a proper voice leading, I yeah. imagine. So, so, yeah. <laughs> so we have 
We have our bass. We have our bass line and our soprano line. Okay. All right. Right. Okay. Mm. Let's see. I'm thinking. What I'm hearing is. Okay, so we know that the first chord is going to be a minor one chord. Mm -hmm. Now this next chord is going to be, we have a two in the bass and we have a seven. Two, five, seven. It's got to be a two chord because, oh wait, the seven chord does have a two in it. Mm -hmm. And the two chord has a seven in it. Mm -hmm. Crap. Yeah, so our strategy is not going to work really well at this point, right? <laughs> yeah. And I hate to burst your bubble, but a 5-7 would also have a 2 and a 7 in it. Ah, that might be what's happening. <laughs> yeah. So, well, is it a 5-7, though? Because does that sound like a major chord to you? No, that sounds very diminished. Yeah. Not very diminished, but diminished, diminished enough. Yep. Yep. So I'm going to write a little circle because I know it's diminished. That's Yeah, that's actually not a bad thing. We know it's diminished. We could maybe even come back to that quality later. Uh-huh. Uh, where is it going? I think we're going back to a 1-6 one, one chord. Because it sounds like a 1 chord, but it has that third in the bass. Right. Yeah. So, as I said before, regarding that mysterious diminished chord. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we have to think about well, how, what is this function? Where is it going? Mm -hmm. We said it's going back to a 1 6 chord. Yeah, yeah, okay. So what goes to a 1 chord? More often the 7 chord than the 2 chord. A chord of dominant function. A chord of dominant function, yes. Yes. Okay. Which would be a 7 chord. <laughs> Right. We know it's not a 5-7, right? It, it's, it's diminished. We, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and, you know, a 2 chord goes to a 5, not a 1. Uh-huh. Right. So, it's, just, it's probably a 7 chord. So, I could have used my theory brain to, to get that one. Yeah. Right on. Right. right on. And sometimes using your theory brain in the right way, so... Seven in first inversion, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and with a... It's actually a 7-7, seven, seven, right? Seven fully diminished seven, seven fully diminished six five. Six five, okay. right? Yeah. So, you know, if you're if you're really following along, and there's our one six chord. From there, hmm. this is the minor chord. I'm in a minor key. And that kind of just leaves the four chord. Four. Because as I also as I look at my notes here, mm -hmm. I'm seeing an F and a C, which is four and one. Yeah. Okay. Four chord. Great. In root position. In root position. And this is always fun when this happens. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> but that's just back to the one. Well, and what inversion? Uh uh, well, let's see here. Bass line is at G, so that would be second inversion. Second, so one six four. One six four. <laughs> to our next chord. I'm hearing yeah, all kinds of fiveiness. Five, yeah. So uh, one six four chord to a five chord is got a special name, right? Oh, would that be the Cadential 6-4? That's four? a Cadential 6-4. I am paying attention. <laughs> I am learning. Holy crap. Yeah, it's amazing how that happens, right? <laughs> yeah. So just to recap. Okay. 1, 7, 6, 5, 1, 6, 4, one six four to five seven to one, mm. and of course many theorists will will consider that one uh, that one six four to really just be five with a couple of suspensions. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, a five chord with two suspensions in it. Yeah. So. Interesting. Ah, there. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's funny because no, <clears throat> you don't think, when you think about the five chord, I tend to relate it to the two chord and the seven chord. You, you, you think those all have uh, similar chord tones, but you don't oh. think about the one functioning as a five. Yeah, right. And well, so you hear that cadential six four. It, it, it's, it's kind of one of these nitpicky little debates. Uh, there, uh, Many theorists will tell you that is not a one chord for the very reason you just described. Mm -hmm. It is not functioning like a one. There's no sense of rest when I hit that chord, right? You, know, you can't say, okay, and then the piece is over there, right? You know, <laughs> I tried just a minute ago, and look what happened. You know, you've got to get a... You know, or the octave jump down. You know. mm -hmm. yeah. uh, because that chord is not functioning like a one. It is, in fact, functioning like a dominant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you think of a dominant with a 4-3 suspension, yeah. Mm -hmm. and also a dominant with a 6-5 suspension, you, know, um, you just think about them both those, both those suspension is happening at the same time. That's what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. So it may technically spell one six four, yeah. But many people will consider that. I've seen it written five six four to five three. Five six four to five three. Yeah, huh. yeah. But meaning six four to five three, meaning the suspension. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Um, a lot of people, uh, but then again, a lot of people say, well, it's the actual notes of a 1 6 4 chord, but you know, one of those little nitpicky things. Hmm. Yeah. Didn't know about that. <laughs> New wrinkle in my brain. <laughs> those are always good. So we're getting pretty good at the seven chords at this point, I think, I, right? You know, it's, I, I gotta say, man, and I don't know if this is just from having listened, from doing this podcast and editing and hearing it over <laughs> and over again, but I'm actually kind of impressed today with how well I'm picking up these chords. Yeah, these you're chords. doing good. Practice, 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 practice. Exposure. Exposure, you know, yeah. That, that, that's all it is. This is a skill you develop. You know, it, It's not something anyone is just naturally better at than anyone else. It, it's just something that, that you know, the more you concentrate on, the better you're going to get at. Yep. And I find myself listening to music and actually applying some of these exercises, trying to pick out the bass lines and the chord progressions. Which is the, which is the ultimate point, right? To be able to listen to actual music and say, oh, hey, you know, they use, uh, you know, Got a little thing here, right? That's why we're here. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Indeed. <clears throat> All for that one simple thing, just to be able to understand what you're hearing. Just to be able to understand what you're hearing. And it is such an invaluable skill. Mm -hmm. It's one of those intangible things that will make you awesome. Mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> as, as a musician and as a and as a music scholar, you know, your ability to listen to stuff and say, I know what's going on there. You know. Very cool, man. Yeah. Well, I think we have time for one more. One more progression. All right. C minor. C minor. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm I'm recognize this is a familiar motion. Okay. In the bass line. Mm-hmm. I believe I'm hearing a walk up from the one. I really like the walk ups today for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Yep. Na 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 na. One two three four five five one. Exactly. Killer. Making the notes. Uh, all right, and so soprano line then. My weak spot. My Achilles heel. First of all, that note. That's the octave down from the soprano, but because I can't sing it. Three, two, one. I want to say that's a three. That's a three. Okay. Great. E flat. All right. So here we go. Soprano line this time. So, like you said, we start on the three, and I think I, I detected some descending motion. Yep. So three, 
two, one. Aha! Uh -huh. That's where I thought it disappeared, but I just wrote, I went ahead and wrote one anyways, yeah. the same note. Same yeah. note. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? And then I think we had that same kind of seven, one, seven leading tone. Yeah. That unmistakable leading tone, one, seven, one situation. Yeah, yeah. Great. Absolutely. Something else might be unmistakable about those last two chords, too. Uh, okay, okay. All right. So now I got the bass line, I got the soprano line. Mm -hmm. So engage theory brain. Engaging theory brain. Chords. Okay, so I'm thinking that there's some, a little bit of inversion action going on here for one thing. Mm, possibly. First chord, of course, being the one. Mm -hmm. Lovely minor one chord. Now this next chord, let's see here. We got a two in the bass. And a two in the soprano. Mm-hmm. Well... It can't be a two though. A two would be a diminished, and that was no way that was a diminished chord. Right? I was gonna say, statistically speaking, statistically speaking, it should be a two, but because yeah. there's two, two, but there's other two notes in the middle. Or I guess they're gonna change that up a little bit, huh? Yeah. It's and it's kind of a new sounding chord that maybe we haven't messed around with a whole lot. It could technically be, I guess, just basing on ha having two scale degree twos, it could be a, a five chord. Uh huh. But did that sound right? <laughs> So, I mean, is that what happened? This is what happened. Yeah, uh -huh. aha. Yeah. There, yeah, there's a there's an there's an unnaturalness about that, right? There's an alien. Yeah. Or maybe a mixed modish thing going on about that. Ah. Uh, you might have given it away. <laughs> I might have given it away. But even before you said that, I was actually leaning towards the 7 chord. Yeah, the the major 7 in first inversion. Right. right. Not the not the not the raised seven for minor, but the naturally diatonic occurring whole step below. In fact, it's that note. Uh, be, uh, half step below tonic seven. And then. Now there's that familiar one six. That familiar one six. Okay. Uh, and this chord is probably going to be interesting. Well, I have myself a uh, a four and a one. Yeah. So I'm thinking this might be a four chord. But be careful. Okay, let me get. Okay, let me hear it again. That sounds diminished. Is that diminished? It sounds diminished to me, man. Huh. Okay. So wow. engage theory brain. What okay. is a diminished quality substitute for a four chord? Okay. It typically substitutes a two. Yes. Huh. Okay. I'm going to write that down. And the fact that we have a scale degree one in the soprano means this particular two chord is some inversion of a two seven. Uh, yes, yes. Right? <laughs> Matter of fact, it is a, what is it? It is a uh, two fully diminished six five. Gracious. Yeah. You got me, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Two half diminished 6 5. I might. <coughs> oh, half diminished? Yeah, it's half diminished. Right, right. And then, of course. I'm thinking this might be a little conventional 6 4. Yeah. Action. 1 6 4. 1 6 4. It's definitely a five. five. Yep. And a strong finish yep. with the one chord. With the one chord. Perfect authentic cadence, right? All right. So to recap, one. Yeah, one, okay. Diatonic seven, six. No. Uh, one, six. Two half diminished, six, five. One, six, four. Five, one. All right, you devil, you.
<laughs> There's two places where you got me, actually. Yeah, uh, a little tricky there. I was so sure that the second chord in the progression, when I heard a two in the bass and a two in the soprano, right. it had to be some kind of two chord. <laughs> not so. <laughs> yeah. And then the chord, the next chord, not the next chord, but the chord after that was that two, six, five. Well, on paper, in the bass and soprano, I'm looking at what appears to be an F minor chord. A four chord, yeah. A four chord, yeah. But uh, those voices in the middle made all the difference, apparently. Indeed they do. And that's why we have to listen for quality. Mm -hmm. And that's why we kind of have to engage our theory brains, you know, and think, well, you know, a four chord is not diminished, so, you know, what does a diminished substitute for a, for a four chord in a minor scale? Right, right. You know, surety can be your, surety can, can be your enemy. Surety can be your enemy. <laughs> <laughs> always second guess yourself. Always question, you know, uh, yourself. Always ask, is that a four chord? You know, uh, because it, it, it can definitely it can definitely help. And you can't always rely on, you know, well, if there's a two in the bass and two in the soprano, then it's a two chord. That's that's a trap. It's hogwash. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, think about it. Going from going from one to two is is a very awkward progression, right? Yeah. Which is very difficult not to use parallel fifths in, in doing that. So, oh, so that rarely fifths. happens. Oh, interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Didn't even think about those dreadful parallel fifths. Oh yeah, I always got to worry about the parallel fifths. Because even though this has nothing to do Especially with uh, making up chord progressions on the spot, this is not a voice leading episode or a uh, what do you call it? Um, a counterpoint episode. Yeah. Every episode is a voice leading episode. <laughs> <laughs> because you are so so, um, but you're following those rules as you're making these chord progressions. Trying, okay. trying now, to. You know, don't don't go scrutinizing too closely. No, 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 no. <laughs> but the but intent there is go. there. But going back to what you're saying, this is not a thing where you can just listen to your heart. You have to engage that theory brain. Yeah, I mean, listen to your heart a little bit, but you know, it, it's best when they work in tandem, as in life. Oh yeah, okay. You know? <laughs> Man, we're getting all kinds of great kind of little <laughs> philosophical... Uh... Oh, yeah, hey, there's, there's so much more to music than just learning a bunch of notes. Yeah. <laughs> well, there we go. Uh, I hope that was helpful. It was pretty helpful to me. I good. had a good time on this episode. Good. And good. I, hope, I hope we helped you guys uh, figure out that those, chord, those chord progressions a little bit better. Yeah, and more chord progressions to come. Indeed. Maybe we're going to have to tackle those medians at some point. Oh, yeah, maybe. Good times. All right, talk to you guys soon. Thanks again for listening. If you value the information we offer, please help us by sharing it with a friend or a fellow musician. And don't forget, we want to hear from you. Contact us at info at musicstudent101.com. 